When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. He cut off the heads of 131 lords. Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, aka Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. Today we look at number 88 of Eric Dubay's 200 Proofs Earth is not a spinning ball. Dubay says, The Isle of Wight Lighthouse in England is 180 feet high and can be seen up to 42 miles away, a distance at which modern astronomers say the light should fall 996 feet below the line of sight. This is another one that took me a minute to find because when I looked up the Isle of Wight Lighthouse in the handy-dandy list of lights, there was nothing matching that description. I recall that someone some time ago told me that the Isle of Wight Lighthouse had a proper name of St. Catherine's Point Lighthouse, which is on the list of lights. Now, it turns out the St. Catherine's Point Lighthouse was 180 feet tall, but it was lowered to 135 feet in 1875. Its range is not 42 miles, but 25. And that range is, of course, the nominal range, not the geographical range. You've probably already guessed that this claim by Dubay is just another one copied from Robotham that neither he nor any of his fanboys bothered to check the validity of. This one is from Zetetic Cosmogony, which was published in 1899. Now, I just said that the lighthouse was lowered in 1875, so you might be wondering why, in 1899, Robotham was publishing outdated information. And that's because a lot of the claims in Robotham's publications are just republished claims that were pulled from other publications. Letters to the editor, letters sent to him, all sorts of unverifiable sources. This claim here about the Isle of Wight lighthouse is not Robotham's claim originally. On page 58 of Zetetic Cosmogony, he says the source is a tract, you know, a pamphlet, called The Bible Versus Science by J.C. Ackester, from which Robotham then extracted this claim. Without checking, by the way, because by the time of the publication, this information was already wrong. So Dubay published, without checking, something from 120-something years ago that Robotham published, without checking, that was at least 24 years out of date at the time he published it. Good job, Eric. Science! That's my job! That's what I... No, wait, I spoke too soon. Looks like the next claim is also from this book on page 61. Number 89, the Cape Agujas Lighthouse in South Africa is 33 feet high, 238 feet above sea level, and can be seen for over 50 miles. Blah, blah, blah. The stats of this lighthouse's visibility is taken from a newspaper article that simply reported the nominal range of the new lighthouse being installed. Now, I say new lighthouse because I don't think this quote is talking about Cape Agujas. Hear me out. The article Robotham quotes says, The Cape Lagujas Lighthouse is to be reconstructed to allow of the introduction of a flashlight. That sounds like it was not been done yet. It then says, A lighthouse erected two miles from Fish River has been completed. That's a different lighthouse. Why do I feel conf confident in that? Because Cape Lagujas is over 300 miles away from Fish River. This lighthouse is only two miles from Fish River and has wholly different dimensions than the lighthouse at Cape Agujas. But to Robotham's credit, even though he is still using the nominal range of the lighthouse incorrectly, he never claims this data is about Cape Agujas Lighthouse. He just includes that first part of in his quote. It's Dubay who attributes this stat to Agujas Lighthouse. Incorrectly, because he's not thinking about what he is copying. Number 90, the Statue of Liberty in New York stands 326 feet above sea level and on a clear day can be seen as far away 
as 60 miles away. If the Earth were a globe, that would put Lady Liberty doop 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 doop. This one is also on page 61 of Robotham's book. Now, it's always possible this claim of seeing the statue light from 60 miles away is true, but it is not possible that it's seen from 60 miles away over water. Even back in 1898, the Statue of Liberty has been visually landlocked. There's no line of sight over water at that distance. The only way for there to be a line of sight view of the statue would be from high elevation regions inland, back before things were overly built. And, of course, higher elevation, the more visible the statue should be. Number 91. The lighthouse at Port Said, Egypt, at an elevation of only 60 feet, has been seen an astonishing 58 miles away, where, according to modern astronomy, it should be dot, dot, dot. Anyway, this claim comes from back on page 58, from the same The Bible versus Science tract. But in this case, the tract itself is pulling this claim from a letter someone wrote that the publication got a hold of. So, follow along. Dubé is quoting Robotham, who is quoting a religious tract that is quoting a letter it received. So, really, who knows how reliable this info is? Well, we can look up the lighthouse at Port Said, and it's been there since 1869 and stopped operating around 1997. And we can see that it's not at 60 feet of elevation, but it's actually 194 feet when it was operating and had a nominal range of 25 miles. The person who wrote the letter didn't know what they were talking about. The tract publisher didn't bother to check. Robotham didn't bother to check. Dubé didn't bother to check if the lighthouse was even still functioning, and you flat boys quote Dubé without checking either. Man, you guys suck. Is that it? No. Number 92. The Notre Dame Antwerp Spire stands 403 feet high from the foot of the tower, with Strasbourg measuring 468 feet above sea level. With the aid of a telescope, ships can be distinguished on the horizon, and captains declare they can see the cathedral spire from an amazing 150 miles away. If the Earth were a globe, however, at that distance the spire should be an entire mile, 5,280 feet below the horizon. Now this one appears on page 60, and it kind of confuses me. The Antwerp spire at... 403 feet tall is correct, but Strasbourg is some 230 miles away. Why is that in there? I mean, I know it's here because Dubé just copied it from this janky-ass book, but it makes no sense. And is it me, or does the math not make sense either? I mean, it doesn't matter, because it's purely anecdotal, and even according to the orig original article, there are hundreds of spires peppering the area for miles, so who knows what they saw? but the math doesn't make sense. <coughs> Number 93. The St. George's Channel between Holyhead and Kingstown Harbor near Dublin is 60 miles across. When halfway across, a ferry passenger will notice behind them the light on Holyhead Pier as well as in front of them the pool bag light in Dublin Bay. The Holyhead Pier Light is 44 feet high, while Poolbeg Lighthouse 68 feet. Therefore, a vessel in the middle of the channel, 30 miles from either side, standing on a deck 24 feet above water, can clearly see both lights. On a ball earth 25,000 miles in circumference, however, both lights should be hidden well below both horizons by over 300 feet. Okay, I'm putting this one here even though it's not copied from Zetetic Cosmogony because it's clumsily copied from Zetetic Astronomy, 3rd edition, 1881. And also, it seems to be the last one in this Lighthouse series of claims, unless one comes up later. I don't actually read more than a few claims ahead. Of course, like a third of Dubé's Lighthouse claims, the Holyhead Lighthouse hasn't functioned as a lighthouse since the early 2000s, so his claim is not one that he can support. But I have no reason to think that the passengers on the crafts in the 1880s were lying about what they saw. Now, the classic counter to most 
lighthouses are seen from too far away claims is the loom of light, which is when, at a distance, the light from a lighthouse can be seen as the scattered light on the atmosphere. The light source itself is not seen, but the light from that source is, and up until now, I haven't brought that up because most of Dubay's claims have been either been about lighthouses that weren't operating when he made the claims or were circumstances where he was taking the published nominal range of a light and claiming it was the experienced geographical range. But this last one seems to be a clear example of loom. While Dubay posits that passengers can clearly see both lights, Robotham uses a less certain description writing. It is not an uncommon thing for passengers to notice both lights. So, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Probably depends on how reflective the atmosphere is. Not much mystery there. All right, that about wraps up this Lighthouse series. I want to give a shout out to user Chewbird, who reached out to me literally three years ago in March of 21 and asked me to please not make the mistake of dismissing all of these claims as light loom. It doesn't address the fact that Dubay is a hack using obsolete data and mischaracterizing the data he has. I kept that exchange as a note to myself for when this set of claims finally came around. So thank you, Chewbird. And thanks to all of you for watching, even you anti-fans out there. Though you don't like the position I take here, and you might not care for the note of disdain in my voice that I do not try to hide, hopefully a tiny part of you will think, maybe you should look a little closer into the claims you're about to repeat. You always tell me that I need to do my own research, when clearly, when it comes to Dubai, you don't take your own advice. Maybe it's time you did. Stay woke, people. No one on this planet to even challenge me. Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.